City Line. Cut your grocery bill with this elevated pantry meal. Chickpeas packed with protein, packed with dietary mm. fiber. Delicious budget-friendly snack ideas. You could dump that onto that and it would still be delicious. Oh my gosh, chickpea on chickpea, I love it. <laughs> then, going green without the grunt work. And sustainable living is not about being perfect. Right. It's about finding one thing that works for you. And you can start with an audit of your trash. There's a reason why she keeps bringing her garbage trash to talk. Because we... <laughs> <laughs> Plus, beauty for all. People might not realize, but there's almost 8 million people in Canada that have some type of disability. Miles Sexton has accessible beauty products. It's really been really cool seeing that a lot of brands are starting to slowly come out with products that are more adaptive. It's City Life with Tracy Moore. Wednesday today. So we are going to be highlighting the brands making beauty more accessible. Plus, it's round two of our budget pantry challenge. I am too excited about this challenge. We're going to be turning a can of chickpeas into the star of the show. Well, the chef is going to do that. That's all coming up. But first, I'm excited for my next guest. She has packed all her eco smart tips into a must read new book, Sustained, creating a sustainable house through small changes, money saving habits, and natural solutions, making it a breeze for Canadians to see how our everyday choices from everything we do, from the way we shop to the way we toss, shape our planet. So please welcome and give her so much love, sustainability expert and now author, Candice Batista. <laughs> I'm so excited. And you look so cute, too. Thank you. I was like, is this the right dress for garbage? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, it is. Like, bring it on. <laughs> Congratulations Thank on you. Sustained. Thanks, I mean, thanks. this has been such a journey for you. It has. What do you want us as readers to get from this book? So sustainable living is hard. We know yeah. that, right? Society's just not set up to help us reduce the amount of waste. So I wanted to do all the hard work for you. So I've taken right. you through key areas of your home, your kitchen, your closet, your furniture, um, your, your beauty section, your bathroom section, everything. I've the covered everything in the book. It's really about the impact, like how does your laundry routine affect the planet? How yeah. do your clothes affect pe the people that make your clothes when we okay. think about fast fashion? Yeah. So I outline all of the impact of those things, but then I give tangible, real things that you can do. A lot of the times, like when you think about sustainable fashion, people say, you know, buy natural materials. Yeah. But what does that actually mean? What right. is a natural material? What kind of certifications are in place? There's so many. Mm -hmm. Some of them are for toxins. Some of them are fabric. Some of them are for fair trade to protect the workers. Mm -hmm. So it's impossible to know and to navigate. So I've put it all into one book, making it easier for people to make more sustainable choices. Pretty overwhelming. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yes. So I like that you've sort of um, taken it all down for us. Now, this is the second time you've come to City Line and brought your trash. I, it is. There's a reason why she keeps bringing her garbage trash here, talk. though. Because we, <laughs> <laughs> because we have to talk about actually auditing our garbage. You yes. encourage us to actually go through our trash. A hundred percent. What's this going to help us do? So in the book, I talk about habits okay so yeah. habits are really important it's shifting habits away but you can't really know what habits to change if you don't know where your garbage is coming from right. where you are producing the most amount of waste okay. so i always tell people pick a period of time so this could be a week up to a month i like a month because it gives you a better idea of what you're creating over time yeah. so you're literally going to collect all of your garbage in a space could be the garage could be the basement whatever's comfortable for you mm -hmm. you'll clean everything out and then you'll just basically store it for the yeah. month once that's done you're gonna put everything out onto a here we just have a reusable um, tablecloth mm -hmm. and you're gonna section it into areas so first I notice I have a lot of glass I go yep. through a lot of glass in just my home good. I have some cardboard lots of plastic plastic produce bags lots of plastic shells so this gives you a good idea the next step is to then go on to your local recycling facilities website mm -hmm. and look at what can be reused or what can be recycled. Yeah. And then I want you to actually do what we call 
a DIY audit. So okay. here, this is really, really easy to I've do. I've actually never seen such beautiful garbage. Thank you. I mean, you really <laughs> cleaned it out. So I cleaned, cleaned it, it out. That. And it's that's really gorgeous. important. Like recycling rates are so low because people aren't doing it properly. So right. you don't have to be perfect. Like with a peanut butter jar, you don't have to clean out every single piece of peanut butter. Yeah. But it's good to just rinse it out. Rinse it it out. just makes it easier to give that a second life. Yes. So once you have all of your trash in place, now you're going to create a chart like this. Super simple. So here, you're gonna have what your products are. So we've got egg cartons, plastic produce bakes, paper, batteries, we don't see those there, but that's okay. Textiles, mm -hmm. dryer sheets. And then you're gonna create columns. So what can be reused, what can be recycled, what goes to landfill. So if we look at egg cartons, for example, mm -hmm. we know that a cardboard, air car uh, cardboard box can be recycled, so that's wonderful. Yep. It can also be placed in your compost bin. So whether you have an outdoor compost bin yep. that you're controlling, or if it's the city bin, you can cut it up into small pieces and put it in there. And is either one better? Um, compost is always better yeah. because it breaks down and we know that once things starts breaking down and composting, you get this amazing soil that yeah. you can then use. It's kind of like a circular economy mm -hmm. where things just keep giving back to the environment. Recycling is good, but composting is better. Okay. Now you'll notice there are quite a few plastic produce bags here. Mm -hmm. The problem with those, they go to landfill. They can't be yeah. recycled. And we see so many of these. We see people putting bananas in small plastic bags, for example. No. Bananas already have skin and they come yeah. attached. They yeah. don't need to go into a bag. Right. We have this thing about cleanliness and, and this weird thing, like a banana has a peel. You're not gonna wash the banana, right? Also, the other stuff, you're gonna go home and wash it. Exactly. Like, so yeah. I, I can now throw my stuff in the bin knowing that, or in the cart, knowing that when I go home, right. I'm washing it. Exactly. So exactly. it's okay, it doesn't need a bag. So in this case, is there an alternative? In this case, yes, a cloth, cloth bag. Bag. So instead of taking those little produce bags at mm -hmm. the grocery store, why not grab some, com uh, some cloth bags and throw them in the car? Yeah. People always say to me, I always forget my cloth bags. When right. you're making your grocery list, put cloth bags on the top and then you won't ah. forget. It's a quick tip and it, yeah. it really is works. I take them out of the trunk and then put See? them in the passenger seat. Amazing. And Because I keep walking and in without them. And keeping a stash, them, so right? That's right, Always. I got a stash in the trunk. Paper's amazing, so mm -hmm. paper you can see there, it's recyclable, which is awesome, but you can also compost paper. Okay. Paper is what's called brown matter, so it actually helps to balance the pH inside your compost bin. Okay. Things like batteries and textiles, yeah. both of these things can't go into any of your bins. So with batteries, this is considered household hazardous waste. Mm -hmm. Same things with paints or any kind of e-waste, old cell phones, computers, those need to go to special facilities and you need to look for those in your area. Yep. For textiles, it's looking for ways to reuse them. Mm -hmm. So never put textiles in a garbage bin no. or in a recycling bin. They don't get recycled in this country, right? So they go down to either a washcloth yes. or like exactly. use it for something else or you donate exactly. it. Exactly, like your pillowcase. If you have old yeah. pillowcases, those can make really great bread bags right. that you can take with you to the grocery store. Yeah. So here with textiles, okay, can I do a clothing swap or can I donate? Mm -hmm. Right? So the idea is to, hello, the idea, <laughs> I'm going too fast as usual. There, the oh, idea, that's cool. Isn't no, that cool? Yeah, I'm going to do more of that. It's so much fun. <laughs> so fun. the idea is to basically look at all of your garbage and say, okay, where can I make changes? So if you know that there's lots of plastic, can you make an alternative when you shop? So instead yeah. of buying peanut butter in a plastic jar, can you buy it in a glass jar? And right. then you can reuse that jar. Or can you buy it in bulk? We're seeing a real trend towards bulk shopping, yep. um, which helps to save a lot of money. Okay. So if you know that, okay, I'm, I'm also eating a lot of takeaway. Out. So is the restaurant that I'm going to on a regular basis, are they able to allow me to bring my own containers? Right. Call ahead and ask them or stop eating out so much. Right? It's right. also going to save you money. I'll say a couple of things. Number one, I'm so happy you brought your plastic in because hearing an expert in sustainability say, I've got plastic too, yeah. helps make all of us feel 100%. a little bit less guilty about it. For sure. It's really hard to navigate the world without using a lot of these materials that cannot be that are gonna end up in landfill. Exactly. So you just gotta do the best you can. You've gotta do the best you can. It's absolutely, sustainable living is not about being perfect. Right. It's about finding one thing that works for you, yeah. sticking to that for a period of time, and then moving on to the next thing. It's like decluttering mm. your home. You wouldn't go into your home and declutter the whole house at once. No. You'd, smart in a, you'd start in a small section and yeah. move on from there. Beautiful, Candace. This is a great way to see how much waste we create, and thanks to Candace, you are all gonna go home with a copy of her new book, Sustain! Look at this! You burst the book! I burst the book. This is so good. Enjoy this and take all the tips.
clips from it. We're going to break. We've got more coming up soon. Coming up, making beauty products accessible for everyone. I got to see it in person for the sort of the announcement to the press of it, and honestly, this is going to be such a game changer. makeup should be able to actually use their products. Here with a roundup of brands making beauty more inclusive is Miles Sexton. Okay, so talk to us about the rise of adaptive beauty products. Adaptive and accessible. Absolutely. So people might not realize, but there's almost 8 million people in Canada that have some type of disability. That's a lot. That, that's a lot of people. And yeah. there's a huge demographic of those people who actually can't access beauty products based off of their physical limitations that they might have. Mm -hmm. So it's really been really cool seeing that a lot of brands are starting to slowly come out with products that are more adaptive, but there's still definitely like a long ways that we need to go to. So. For sure. <laughs> I like that we're starting to see that change now. You have brought us a, a bunch of different products yes. that you might want to consider. What is your first one? So we're going to start with Guide Beauty. So this is a really cool brand. So it was created by her name's Terry, and she was a professional celebrity makeup artist. And then she got diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and lost a lot of her mobility in terms of her hands and her arms. So she's created this really cool tool. I'm going to hand you one so you can see it. So there's brushes and brow products, but it has this little tiny piece that fits in between your finger. Yeah. So you have a lot better grip. So if you have less hand movement or like not, you don't have a lot of like strength in your hands, you're really able to hold the product and then get really close to your face and apply it. That's so, so cool. Right? So much easier. Yeah. And I think the big thing is that the brushes are also a lot shorter and like again the applicators are a lot shorter so that if you need to rest your fingers on your face you're able to do that versus right. a long traditional brush that we see out there. That is very cool. And it's, it's the things that you don't think about unless you're in that position. Exactly. Right? Now, she also came out with this really cool uh, eyeliner applicator. I mean, we all struggle trying to do like liquid eyeliner, oh you know? Uh -oh. I will take all the help I can get. <laughs> exactly. So what's really cool about this device is we have this really kind of octagon applicator. So again, easier to grip and it's not super, it's more matte. So it like kind of sticks to your hand a little bit better. Right. But it's a little silicone applicator like this where you can actually stamp it. So you can hold it against your face and go right up against your eye and like press it in to do your eyeliner or yeah. you could swipe it, which Show is really cool. Show us that one more yeah. time. We just want to get a close up of that so that you can see how the applicator actually yeah. helps you put on your eyeliner there. See that? Isn't that cool? So when we normally would do our eyeliner, our elbows would be up, yeah. right? And we're going across, but a lot of people might not be able to lift their arm that way That's or have right. the strength to do it. So it makes it so much easier. Like what an innovation. And down to the packaging too, so much easier to open because of the shape of the package too, so you're really right. able to grip it. Yeah, so a lot of these pots come and they're just completely round. This one's got edges that you can hang on to, so you're going to be able to take it off a little bit easier. Exactly. So even someone with arthritis, like too, right? Absolutely. It's going to be a lot easier to do that. Beautiful. Okay, you've got other uh, brush options yeah. for us as well. Yeah, so there well. is another company called Cole Creatives. They mm -hmm. also make adaptive um, brushes. What's really cool and cool is that they bend really easily as well. But one of my favorite pieces is also for the visually impaired community. So on the side, you actually have a raised QR code that you can okay. scan with your phone, and it gives you an audio like file that tells you what each of the brushes do. So That's if someone awesome. is visually impaired, they're able to figure out which brush is going to do what. And what's great is like they all can stand up, so they're easier to pick up. Cool. Too. Yeah, such a cool brand. They also make these really great eye stickers. So if you want to do your uh, liquid eyeliner, you can actually just take out the sticker, put it on your eye, and then fill it in as well, which is so cool. <laughs> so you basically have like a little bit of a, you know, you like have a guide. like a, you have a bit of a guide, yeah. like coloring my numbers. I think that is fantastic. Right? Okay, so many things <laughs> to think about. A lot of us have heard of Rare Beauty. Yes. I know that this is, you know, a favorite for so many folks. Um, what I didn't realize is there is an accessibility element to this. I think really got celebrated kind of after the launch because a lot yeah. of people who had like disabilities were like, wow, like Selena Gomez, she actually thought about how the like products open. Mm -hmm. So it was really kind of cool to, to see that she actually like included inclusivity into the brand without it being the forefront of it because the yeah. brand wasn't designed to be an adaptive beauty brand. It was just an extra thought of inclusivity that she put into the packaging. I love that. And you can see something having a little knob like this is going to help you to open it up a little bit easier. Exactly. We actually have a positive review about this product. Take a look. 
I can't tell you how many times I bought makeup, got it home, and then couldn't open it. So when I bought this one, I was like, oh wow, look at this little circle thing here. Cool. And my little hand that has no strength in it, I was able to turn it. And then I opened it and then put the blush on my face. Holy moly. Look what the world is when we're more inclusive. See, didn't take much. Isn't amazing? But now she can use it. Exactly. So when you really look at the product, you can see these sort of knob applicators that they have on the foundation and yeah. concealers all have that. The blushes and the lip products have that. And then something that's also really cool is that she's done a lot of flat sides. Mm -hmm. So when you, like maybe you drop the product, it's not gonna roll around because mm. the flat edge stops it from rolling. So it's a lot yes. easier to pick it back up again. Yes. Not chasing your product, it's not rolling under the couch. Oh, well yeah. the, the getting on the hands and knees <laughs> yeah. on the cold tile of exactly. the bathroom because the eyeliner's <laughs> under the vanity. <laughs> it's a very annoying, exactly. so this is lovely. Um, tell us, uh, talk to us about your next product. So this one is called Cyrus. And they're, what's really cool is they are actual stickers for people that have visual impairment. Okay. So this was actually designed by the founder, inspired by her son who has a visual impairment. And so you can actually take these stickers and like put them on all of your beauty products, yep. which is really cool. So that, that way you can figure out which product is which. Oh, I love yes. that. Now these are not braille. No, they're not. Only 10% of like people who are blind or have visual impairments actually read braille. So they're actually all raised waterproof stickers um, oh that have symbols. And again, they have a little barcode on it yes. so that you can scan it and you get an audio file telling you which each sticker is. So for example, this triangle means your eye cream that you'll oh, see on so this cool. one here. So. So you put them on and then if you forget, you can go back to that QR code exactly. and get the audio version. And it'll tell you what it is. Beautiful. Uh, we do have another uh, brand that is all about accessibility, uh, but I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna ask you to explain it because yes. we don't have a represent we no. don't have a represented, but you'll see the shots of it. Absolutely. So it hasn't hit the market yet. This is yeah. called the Hapta device by Lancome. Okay. Now what's really cool about this is think about it like a cell phone stabilizer, but it's like a stabilizer for your lipstick. Okay. So it's a device that you can actually use and it will stabilize your hand motion so that you are able to apply your lipstick if you're a bit shaky or you don't have a lot of like physical movement. You can see it in the video. Video here it's so cool so I got to see it in person for the sort of the announcement to the press of it and honestly this is going to be such a game changer and they're hoping to take it to the future is not just be lipstick it's also going to be mascara mm -hmm. as well too which I'm so excited about <laughs> all the items that are really hard to manipulate yes. and you have to have this incredible dexterity and this yeah. hand-eye coordination all of that has to be easier. Totally. As we age, as we get arthritis, as we move in, in and out of different disabilities in our lives. Yes, exactly. It should be accessible for, for all. So this is great. Uh, thank you, Miles. Oh, thank you for having me today. Very nice. <laughs> and if you like any of these products and you see that you need some of these, you've got to grab your phone right now. We put up a QR code on the screen. You can scan it with your phone and we will take you right to the product that you are looking yes. for so it's easier for you to uh, to find it. Miles, thank you so much uh, for that. That was fantastic. <laughs> Let's go to break. We got more coming up. Stay with us. Coming up, Chef Paul Lilikus nails the pantry challenge. I that think I, I'm going to eat some more, man. Go for it. It's go really for it. It's almost lunchtime. Today. Welcome back. Finding creative and budget-friendly meal options doesn't have to be a daunting task. In fact, the answer to all your meal idea struggles lies in your pantry. Roll up your sleeves, because today we are talking about the little legume known as the chickpea. And here to show us how to transform this pantry staple into a family favorite, Chef Paul Lillikus. He can do it! You bring something so simple and you elevate it. And yeah. last time you were here, uh, we did tuna. Yeah. And I've been using that recipe, the one with the, the ch chili the oil. Dressing. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Well, that's like, what I like on to hear. repeat. So today we're doing chickpeas. Talk to us about chickpeas. I love chickpeas too. All right. So chickpeas packed with protein, packed with dietary mm. fiber. And I'm always keeping them on hand in my pantry. But there are a few different kinds. So let's go through them. Okay. Of course, there are dried chickpeas. These are cheaper, but a little bit more work. Yep. So you have to soak those for about 24 hours, then cook them. Yeah. So I'm a kind of a convenience person. Yeah. I, I go for I was already not listening to that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, next, go in the can, please. <laughs> yeah, I always keep the cans around. Yeah, and and for case. the same reason. But And you can, of course, get them with no sodium. I always get the ones with a little sodium, but that's because I'm a salt freak. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But you have versatility there, depending on what your diet needs. Okay, fair. 
So, we're gonna make a salad because I was thinking, oh man, it is winter. Everyone's making soups and stews yes. and warm saucy things. Let's make an evergreen recipe, good all year round, and only gets better as it sits in the fridge. Let's switch it up then. What kind of salad are we gonna make? Okay, so we're going to make a bruschetta, chickpea, and red bean salad. Sounds kind of like a deli style salad, and it's oh, so, so easy good. to make. So you wanna come help me here. Yeah. Here, you can dump in our chickpeas. So one can, drained and rinsed. Yep. I'm gonna add one can of red kidney beans, also drained and I'll rinsed. Take that for you. Thank you. And now you don't really have to mix the dressing ahead of time because this all just sort of marinates together. So we're going to add some white vinegar. Okay. What does the vinegar do? It adds acidity. Okay. It's an underused seasoning. Yeah. Uh, a bean salad with no acidity is just not gonna it's taste flat. that good. It's flat. Yeah. yeah. You can add as much salt as you want. Actually, it keeps you from having to add more salt. Love that. Now, the bruschetta themed ingredients. We're gonna add some sun-dried tomato, finely chopped. Smart. And I'm gonna add the oil from the jar. So instead of adding extra nice. oil, we're using that tomato infused oil. Yes. Some minced garlic. You want the spoon or are you good? Yeah, I guess I should use the spoon. Nah, whatever. I wash my hands, I promise. <laughs> He's a professional. Everybody. Some minced shallot. Nice. So you could add red onion if you wanted. You could use green onion. I like shallot, it's, it's a mild flavor. Right. Some white sugar to balance that acidity. Yeah. Some basil, you wanna dump that in, about a quarter cup of fresh chopped basil, and some salt and pepper. Nice. And now we're just gonna give this a stir, and this is best made like a day before, or even better, 48 hours before, and then you just keep sort of stirring mm -hmm. it, let those flavors meld and marry together. I was mentioning to you earlier, my mom used to take me to the deli when I was a kid. Yeah. And I remember being a little kid and observing, I guess I was wearing a bit of a chef hat then too, observing, <laughs> this just like tastes better than it did yesterday. Yeah. And that's because it's, it's been given time to sort of meld. Marinate in those flavors. Yes. So was baby uh, Paul like a little foodie? Oh, totally. You totally. were, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. I was so like when they served up peanut around. butter and jam for lunch, were you like, no? No, 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 no. I wasn't, I was interested in food, but I wasn't a snob by any means. Okay. I grew up All with right. lots of humble food, and I was yeah. just interested. And I was always looking at how different ways you put food together yeah. affects the way it's perceived. I love that. And that I still do to this day. That's so cool. See, if I had a little bit of that, I'd probably want to cook more. For sure, for sure. You I've had been it trying in your to bones, inspire you. right? No, you're, you're, it's working because I make your recipes. I love it. Okay, so, so this is the salad. It looks, yes. oh, I can try some. I made you a little taster Thank there. Thank you. And the thing with this is this comes in eight servings. That's so good. At $8.88. <laughs> And 88 cents. That means per serving, we're per talking serving, about how much? Just over a dollar. Just over a dollar per yeah. serving. Food is expensive, exactly. so you've got to take notes. Make right? it yourself. Make it yourself Make it and yourself. keep it in the fridge. Yes. Okay, you've got another one. This is a little snack. It's a little crunchy, a little yeah, flavor. Yeah, exactly. Little DIY snack made with a couple of cans of chickpeas. I that think I, I'm going to eat some more, man. Go for it. It's go really for it. Good. It's almost lunchtime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll walk you through this. Okay, so. Okay. I've taken two cans of chickpeas, drained and rinsed them, and mm -hmm. then just microwave them in some paper towel for about 15 minutes till they've dried and they start to split. Okay. And now we're going to roast these. I've already got some in the oven here. Okay. Just with some olive oil, 350 degrees for about half an hour and they become crispy. So we're just going to season oh, these. that's how you do it. That's it, that's all there is to it. You could use the dried chickpeas as well, but you would have to soak them yeah. ahead of time because basically you're trying to just dry them out, make them crispy. Yeah. And then I like a sweet chili seasoning. It's like mm -hmm. one of my favorite chip flavors, sweet with heat. And so this seasoning is just smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, salt, and a little granulated sugar. Yep. So that's gonna go right on. And as soon as it hits the pan, you can smell that smoked paprika. And you can add as much or as little as you want. So this is gonna be like, if you want that crunch, you know, like some people, you sometimes you just want the crunch. Exactly. You can put it on your salad. You can just snack on that on your own. Totally. On its own. And these are best served like right from the oven. Yeah. They don't stay crispy for too long. But okay. if you made them the day before, you could just throw them back in the oven for like three minutes, re-crisp them. You could, like you said, you could add them as sort of a, just a crunch thing in a pita onto Let's your salad. That. You could dump that onto that and it would still be delicious. Oh my gosh, chickpea on chickpea, I love it. <laughs> okay, so talk to me a little bit about cost when we're, when we're talking about the dried chickpeas. Okay, so for this one, let's say one portion is like one snack portion, like, you know, a heaping palmful. Yeah. For eight servings, we're talking $4.20. So just over 50 cents for a snack serving. That's amazing. Yeah. Better than anything you're gonna get in the pocket.
chicken. Absolutely. So good, Paul. Thank and you. homemade. And homemade. So recipe ideas, you can find them all at CityLine.tv, of course. And if you want to find me near a kitchen, this is your chance. This Saturday, March 9th, I hope you will all join me at the National Home Show for City Line Day. We got the whole day. So you can come and see me and our incredible experts all day long at the Enercare Center. That's at the X. You can use the discount code CityLine to get $5 off your ticket. And for the lucky viewers in this audience today, you're all going to get a pair of tickets for free. <laughs> Coming up, a lesson in learning and appreciating our bodies exactly as they are. I mean, yeah. uncomfortable sometimes is to be on your own team. That's and right. I think the more we start to lean into that, yeah. the more we start to practice that, the easier it becomes to fall into that group. celebrate women. We hope that we are a soft place to land and we bring you the stories that make you feel empowered, informed, and valued. This Friday is International Women's Day, the theme inspiring inclusion, and there's no better way to celebrate ourselves than with the words we use in our own heads and when we look in the mirror. Do you ever think about that when you look in the mirror? Be kind to yourself. And there's no better person to talk about this than breakfast television host and inclusivity advocate, Meredith Shaw. Oh my gosh, Tracy. So oh, good to have you. Thank you. Thank you for so, having me. So, a few weeks ago, we did a thing. Oh, we did a thing. We did a bit of a thing. <laughs> Do, should we show them what the thing is? I think we should. I mean, I think we should see it ourselves, too. This I is have kind not of a seen big it reveal. yet. No, I know. Same. So, here are the photos. Oh, come on. Okay. That is the lead story in the kit and the Toronto Star that we collaborated on for mm -hmm. International Women's Day. It was such a fun photo shoot. You brought me into the photo shoot. So how did this whole collab start? Well, it really uh, started because they were interested in having me do an op-ed piece, the kit and the star, about uh, how I talk about my body. Because okay. that was something that was sort of of conversation when I began my role on breakfast television yeah. and I thought you know sure I'd love to do that but what I'd really love to do is expand that conversation because I think the conversations we have about our own bodies really start to get in symphony with others and start to get in power with others when we do it together so I, I really yes. was interested not just in my perspective but I feel like that's the conversation around bodies it's including everyone's perspective and so I knew I wanted you involved <laughs> in this. And uh, luckily, after that text message, you said absolutely. So, yes. Oh, my gosh, for sure. Uh, Tracy Moore and Ann Purnell and Lauren Chan. Yeah. And the four of us got together and, and did our thing that hopefully inspires others to feel seen and feel ready to do theirs. Talk about good energy in that room. And I'll tell you this. I'm happy you made it a whole bunch of different voices because have you ever been in a situation when you're hanging out with a bunch of women and they start dissing themselves? Mm. It sucks the air out of the room because it makes you start thinking about yourself. It's like, oh, am I supposed to be unhappy with who I am? Like, it just, it's nice if we can actually start being kind to ourselves even around groups of other women instead yeah. of making it a sport to tear ourselves down. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, we start to get into, that's a clap. Yeah. yeah. It's almost a habit. It's a habit. You know, it's almost something we fall into because yeah. it's comfortable. And yeah. the uncomfortable sometimes is to be on your own team. That's and right. I think the more we start to lean into that, just like anything, we practice it. Yeah. The more we start to practice that, the easier it becomes to fall into that groove. Right. And then that groove becomes the conversation as opposed to the other. Totally. Mm -hmm. Like, you look good today, Meredith. You look amazing today, Tracy. Thank you. <laughs> just sit in the compliment. Just sit in the compliment. Just sit in yeah, it. Yeah, you know what? Don't say, oh, this dress has pockets. Oh, but you know, it's really cheap. <laughs> oh, it's on sale. Head. I got it on sale. I do it, yeah. too. I do it, too. But less than I used to, for sure, because yeah. I'm working on it. So we did a segment last month that really resonated with women all over the world. I've done a lot on this show. I've taken off my makeup, the eyelashes, the whole nine on air. I've taken off all of my clothes to show my shapewear underneath my dress. And then a few weeks ago, we had four other women join me in studio to reveal our weight. Take a listen. <laughs> oh. The thing we all have in common is we are all the same weight. 185 pounds right across the board. Give it up for everyone for showing it all. 
hard. That was hard mm, for me. That, and that was powerful to see. I had to actually um, ask myself, why is that so hard, Tracy? Like, why is that such a big deal? You're pretty comfortable with who you are. What's the big deal about throwing out the number? But mm -hmm. it just shows you how deep-seated all these issues are that we have. And the whole point of the segment was to shift the focus from the numbers on the scale to who we are as people. It's not that important, whatever number comes up. Does it change what I have brought to the show? Does it change how I operate as a mom? Does it change who I am as a daughter? Does it change who I am as a wife? No. no. It's just not a measure. It's We've not been a taught measure. to think that it is. And I think what's so beautiful about that is even people that, you know, you might look to to think, okay, they're confident with this. Yeah. It's kind of great to know, like, that was a bit hard. Because yes. that's also normal. You're not going to just sail off into this land of positivity and okayness with yourself. Right. You're going to come up to those bumps in the road. The biggest thing for me is that the bounce back is quicker. Mm -hmm. So I can have the thought, like, ooh, this is hard. Mm -hmm. But I do it anyway. Yeah. Right? And so years back, I might not have done it anyway. So I think that's the real uh, almost goal. It's not to yeah. just have none of those thoughts. It's to be able to hear them and decide, am I taking that thought on? Or yes. am I saying later yeah we're yeah. Sw we're swimming in toxic waters you're yeah. never not going to have the thought yeah it's the bounce back mm -hmm. i love that so as i mentioned really good energy on the day of the shoot and i wanted to talk a little bit about ann purnell who was there lauren chan as you mentioned yes. was there ann purnell was there um and i loved ann's approach to body language listen to this my body is the vessel that gets me through life. I feel like I've had a really great life so far, and the thing that's gotten me through it is this body. It holds my heart, it holds my brain, it holds every part of me, and she might not fit into someone's standard of beauty, but to me, the inside is the thing that really makes the outside shine, so I love my body. <laughs> I love it! I love She's her so, so much. She's so good! I think she is such a light, you know. Yeah. I, I think it was really cool too to come together, you know, across media companies too, totally. um, which I think is something that you know doesn't happen uh, sort of often enough. But she is it. I just love her. If I could just spend the rest of my life hanging out with women with that level of comfort in yeah. who they are and their bodies, it would be it would be so much easier, I think, to stay in that space. Yeah, because there was so a comfort. Joyful. There was a comfort there. No yes. one, no one was sort of fussy or like, oh, I don't know about this. I didn't suck in. I'm always sucking yeah. in. You <laughs> yeah. know, the older I get, the more a little hang out. <laughs> yeah, and I'm girl. kind of happy about yeah. that. Um, and the, in, the inner monologue was very positive for that whole shoot. How did you feel at that shoot? I Just so excited about what's to come, yeah. truly. Because I think the team at The Kit and the Star, they assembled such an incredible group of women mm -hmm. uh, behind the scenes. And, you know, Aaron Layden, the photographer, and the incredible stylist. And when you put that kind of collective together, you you move the needle. You change yeah. what's going on. And and not only change outwardly for people watching, but us too on that set. I was changed yes. that day. Um, I was reinforced. There was more proof that this is true and we can exist in different bodies and shine. And I think those types of reinforcements for both the people in it and watching mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, it's so important and it's magic. It yeah. is magic. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, looking at you during that shoot, I was like, oh, yeah, she's a model. <laughs> the way you move your body. I was like, she's a model. So well, I know she... you was a TV host and a radio host, but yeah. the way you were like. Well, she's a little out of practice, but, you no, know, it was we like don't forget. The right? eyes, it was giving. It was just, it was so beautiful well, to watch. Well, excuse me, I was watching you too, girl. I was seeing you get down in that cat suit. That's I was right. like, oh, we're not that uncomfortable. We're I good. wanted to walk home with that, but yeah. I know the Uber driver would have looked at me kind of funny. The, you know, you don't all have to do a photo shoot at home, but start with the exercise of talking to yourself nicer in the mirror. I think that's something we can all do every day. For sure. And get into the habit of being kind to yourself. Yeah, and just expose yourself to other ways of thinking and other people. Yeah. People who are kind of occupying the space that you want to. I mean, that's the really can be the beautiful thing uh, about social media is to really find the people that that feed that message back to you. Mm. I'm just so excited for for this magic to come out with with all four of us together. And so much more magic to come. Yes, Meredith cool. Shaw, yes, everyone. Thank you. thank you for keeping the conversation going. We love that. You. you can check out all the kit and the Toronto Star collaboration on International Women's Day. We're going to break. Stay with us, everyone. <laughs> Coming up, the vicious cycle of high stress and poor sleep.
can't fall asleep, so now we're stressed out. We're not sleeping, which stresses out, us out even more, mm -hmm. and then depletes our energy. City Lines Wellness Wednesdays is brought to you in partnership with Jameson Vitamins. For everyday immune support, Jameson is here for your health. Welcome back, everyone. Our sleep, stress, and energy levels need to be balanced for better well-being. So here with tips to get our stress in check so we can sleep well, which is so important, we've got sleep expert Alana McGinn with us. Thanks. Thank you for helping us. There's nothing more important than sleep. So the effect sleep, stress, and energy have on each other, it can be a vicious cycle. Absolutely. Listen, when we're stressed out, we're not sleeping well. And what can happen is when our stress levels are high, our cortisol levels are high. This is our stress hormone. So now we're going to bed with that. We can't fall asleep, so now we're stressed out. We're not sleeping, which stresses out us out even more, mm -hmm. and then depletes our energy. Right. So it absolutely can happen. Okay, so we are actually going to deal with this whole stress and sleep conversation by using these paddles. You've all got paddles with you, and I'm going to be asking you true or false questions all about our daily routines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the first question. True or false? All stress is bad. True or false? All stress is bad. Mm, you guys are about half and half. Mostly you're saying false, and I agree it's false. Is not it false? Not all stress is bad. Not all so that's right, right? That's right. False Yay! is right. Yeah, not all stress is bad. Okay. So listen, stress is a normal human experience that we all experience, right? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's from changes and challenges in our life that we maybe respond to both physically and mentally. Yeah. But when we recover from stress, we can become more resilient. We grow. Uh, we can thrive. Um, now, chronic stress can lead to burnout. And that's mm. where things can take a turn. So burnout, the difference between stress and burnout is... Burnout is when we're experiencing these challenges and these changes, mm -hmm. but we don't have the proper resources to help us recover from it. So we don't have the time, we don't have the support, maybe we don't have the finances. We feel like nothing can be controlled. How it affects our sleep is that, like I said, our stress levels are higher than usual, our cortisol levels are higher, that mm -hmm. suppresses our melatonin. This is our natural sleep hormone. Got so it. now we're going to bed and we're struggling with sleep. So we need to combat that burnout. A great okay. way to do that is taking that break, taking that rest, incorporating rest. We talk a lot about sleep, yeah. but we need to also rest, right? So Absolutely. breathing exercises, rest. This is a great little just lap um, weighted blanket that you can place Ooh, on your lap that's and good. incorporate in that rest. Find the resources. So when yes. you're struggling to find the time, the support, the finances, ask for help. This is the time to start doing it. Okay. Getting your body moving is really important too. A simple walk, that can counteract cortisol into the bloodstream. So yes. So that can help combat some of that burnout. I never want to do it. And every time I do it, I I'm know. like, oh, I'm better for it. You feel better. I Absolutely. use my 85 pound dog as my lap, my weighted as lap. As do I. Just as sit. do I. Okay, next one, true or false, action becomes motivation. Think about this one. True or false, action becomes motivation. I'm going with true on this one and so are you. Everybody's yes. saying true, are we right? I love that, you are right. This yeah. is one of my favorites. So the smallest action can lead you towards your goals. But often we think we have to be motivated to take that action, right? right. But when we take that action, we start seeing the results, we then become more motivated. Yes. So take a quick five minute action right in the morning, starting with some great supplements, right? Mm -hmm. So here we have Jameson's ashwagandha capsules. This is an easy way to support your response to stress, to increase your stress resistance, increase your energy. Their non-GMO, vegetarian-friendly formula, it contains 6,000 milligrams of ashwagandha per capsule. Amazing. You can also include Jameson's B12. I actually include these myself. So Fast-dissolving tablets. They're mm -hmm. standout vitamin to support your energy. Um, special B vitamin is naturally energizing and helps the body convert carbs, protein, and fat into energy. Yeah. And then incorporate a great five-minute breakfast, right? Eggs, also a great source of B12, fruits, and start your day, small actions to support your goals. Beautiful, I will take anything that helps my energy levels for sure. Yeah. Okay, next question, true or false? We have to schedule in time to stress out. <laughs> true or false? We should schedule in time to stress out. It sounds weird, but it's totally something I would do. True? Oh, most of you are true. A couple of you are like, no. What, what is it? <laughs> it is true. It's true. It you is get true. to schedule your stressing out. <laughs> yeah. Put it in the calendar. Because here's what happens. We are so busy throughout the day, right? So yeah. we kind of push all our worries and concerns down. And then when do we start thinking about them? At 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. So give yourself that personal pause. 
one of two ways of doing that. One way is through constructive worry. So grab a notebook, Ooh. write out your worry, and write out some solutions during the day. Time box your worry, right? 1 to 2 p.m., 5 to 10 minutes. Put it away, you're done. You don't have to think about it at 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay, what's the second way? So the second way is through a mindful hush or like a mindful moment. So this is where you might want to do some meditation, some mindful thinking. That can seem overwhelming if you've never meditated and then we're just amplifying our stress, right? right. So a great little exercise is the raisin exercise. I've got some raisins for you, Tracy. Thank you. So this is just a way to kind of train your brain to be in a present state of mind. So looking at the raisin, looking at all the crevices of the raisin. How does the raisin feel when you manipulate it and squeeze it? How does it taste? How does it smell? So when your mind goes to that worrisome thought, you can bring it back to the raisin. It's a good Just grounding a quick, exercise. Exactly, exactly. I usually use the sky. I look at the clouds and what have you. But if you're inside, that is a smart way to yeah, do it. I like that. Okay, our next question, true or false, our bedtime routine isn't as important as our children's. True or false? Our bedtime routine isn't as important as our children. That is absolutely false for me. I feel like mine is more important. 100%. I'm running this ship. I better be in a good mood. Okay, most of them agree with me. Yeah, false. it's false. Listen, our bedtime routine, we put so much work into our kids' yeah. bedtime routine, and then we kind of neglect ourselves at bedtime. Mm -hmm. We have to prepare our body and mind to sleep, yes. right? So starting right at the start of bedtime with a great bedtime supplement, we have Jameson's Melatonin and Immunity Gummies. These are formulated to improve sleep quality and support a healthy immune system in a delicious mixed berry gummy. There's five milligrams of melatonin per gummy to support better sleep and cue our body that it's nighttime. We always wanna work with our external environment, darkening up the room as best we can to release that melatonin, but this is just a great way to kind of balance that offset. And then we have another one. This is Jameson's Magnesium Bisglycinate. These are fun and delicious cranberry grape flavors. This is an easily absorbed mag magnesium and it promotes a great calm. So it's a great yes. one to take right before bed to give you that calming feeling. And they taste delicious. They do. So thank you for that, Alana. And we are going to be drawing for a $250 Jameson gift card for one lucky audience member today after the show. So good luck. Time for a break. We will be right back. Stay with us, everyone. Beautiful audience. We've had so much fun with them. We're grateful to have them here every day. And special thanks to Noms because our audience gets to indulge in their nutrient packed energy balls. The Noms decadent treat is refined, sugar free, and made with only four simple, wholesome ingredients. So thanks to them for that. And that brings us to the end of the show. I hope you learned something new because I learned a lot. I have to schedule in my worrying. <laughs> you have to put it in the calendar. I'm going to worry from 1 to 2 p.m. Great tips. Thank you so much to all of our experts, the best in the country. We love you so much, and we love all of our viewers at home that watch every day and all of you in here. We had a great time with you.